Once upon a time in the existence of you, you were one single cell, no offense. And over the course of your life, that cell is going to divide into 37 zero 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 cells and that just to be clear is 37 trillion it's actually slightly more than that it is a stunning statistic and it really begs the question well how that it's not a great scientific question this one by the way but how the heck does that happen what is that process and of course we're interested therefore in the process of mitosis which is the how of this so let's think about mitosis just for a second. And before we look into it in detail, and of course this illustration is going to help us a great deal in a few moments' time, but with mitosis, I'd like you initially to understand that it helps cells, or organisms I should say, to grow. So it's a, it's a central process in growth. Now growth is not going to be a complex idea for you. You know that zygotes grow to be babies, babies grow to be adults. We see growth all over the uh, natural world. It's a completely standard concept to us, but mitosis is at the heart of it. Secondly, mitosis is central to repair, to repair damaged tissue. So think about uh, the last time you cut your finger or something similar, you grazed your knee, at some point afterwards, a series of skin cells have effectively regrown or repaired that break in the skin. And those skin cells have been divided through the process of mitosis to achieve that. And finally, and we'll study this in far greater detail in other tutorials, mitosis is also at the heart of asexual reproduction. So organisms that rely on asexual reproduction as their reproductional system. Mitosis, again, is at the heart of that. Now, this is where things kind of get interesting. I want to introduce you to what we call the cell cycle. And you'll see here that the cell cycle has three parts. It is dominated by one part, which we refer to as interphase. Now, interphase, I'd like you to understand, is when, this is, that was meant to be the same color, believe it or not, is when, the cell prepares to divide. Because of course, this mitosis thing is all about the division of cells. The cells prepare to divide. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I wanna say, I wanna keep it to one cell. So the cell prepares to divide. Lovely, okay? So that's what's happening for the majority of a cell's existence. Where the nitty gritty, I guess, happens is in mitosis. And mitosis specifically is when the nucleus the nucleus divides, and I'm gonna show you how that happens, okay? And finally, we have this crazy word, cyto meaning cell, kinesis meaning movement, or when cells move away from one another, cytokinesis, great word to learn, isn't it? You can drop that one in at dinner when you're at home tonight and impress your, impress your folks, I'm sure that'll be popular. But cytokinesis is specifically when the cytoplasm the cytoplasm divides. Okay, the cytoplasm divides. And there we've got our three stages. Just notice the time allotment is far greater for that interfacing. Now, bearing this single fact in mind, the nucleus divides is mitosis. You could even now go back to our image here of some cells, some of which are going through mitosis, and you might even, without even learning this yet, you might be able to identify which of these cells has evidence of the nucleus dividing. And I'll just allow you to ponder that, and we'll come back to that in quite a bit of detail as we go forward. Now, what I want to do is I want to take our green line for interphasing, and I want to just stretch it out. There's our interphase. So let's just quickly have a look at what happens. So in order to do this, we need a cell. So let me make, I don't know, a green cell for argument's sake. Color's not important, I'm just using them for illustration. Let me put a nucleus in there, which is definitely right in the middle of that cell, which is what I was aiming for. And let's make this a very simple organism, and let's give it one blue chromosome and one pink chromosome. In other words, we've got one single pair of chromosomes here. Now, the thing I'd like you to realize is that in the initial stages, well, I, I mean, the first thing is this is literally a new cell. Okay, so this is just separated from its sister cell. So it's just gone through this process. In other words, we are right here, look. We are right here. We're right here. Now, what I want you guys to realize is that during interphase, during interphase, if I just select my cell, copy it, let's make a cop, let's bring it over. So we're not making another cell here. What I'm doing is I'm showing you how it changes. I'm showing you how it changes. Uh, let me just go back here. 
the first thing that happens is that this cell gets bigger. It gets bigger. In other words, it experiences growth. So the cell grows. Okay. Now, a couple of things you might want to add in terms of your terminology here. We get an increased number. I'm just going to represent that as an up arrow, an increased number of organelles. So there's more, or there are greater, organelles within the cell. Specifically, let me go down slightly, greater numbers of ribosomes and greater numbers and size actually of mitochondria okay of mitochondria okay so of course this is effectively a fuller cell so therefore it grows for that reason now the next stage i want to show you the next stage let me just take our cell again i might end up with a bit of arrow here i think let me just take our cell again let's copy it and let's bring it over here okay so let's bring it over here so it's the same cell let me just fill in its little gap now it's the same cell what we're going to find now is in this next stage in interphase something kind of interesting happens we get dna replication so our single strands of dna our, our, our dna uh, sorry our chromosomes containing that dna code they replicate so we get what we call dna replication so now if i was to take here for example and here, for example, these are now two identical copies of the same genetic code. It's replicated. However, it's also worth mentioning that this is still one chromosome. This is still one chromosome, okay? So just be aware of that. We get rid of those arrows just for this being nice and clean. So we get DNA replication. And I'm just going to add in there, but it's still one chromosome. I think it's worth knowing that. Now, at this point, the cell simply grows a little bit more. And at that point, we are now at the end of interphase prepared now to enter mitosis so let's take our mitosis arrow let's strain it out i'm going to make it much longer than it actually is just to give myself some space we've got mitosis here and what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my cell which i've got here let me take my cell <laughs> i've missed that side again copy it paste it and let's bring it down let's be ready for mitosis so let me bring this down here Here's my cell, just as we had it before. And now we are ready for mitosis. Now you might be saying to me, well, we're in mitosis, James. That looks identical. Well, the cell kind of is, well, the cell is identical, except for when I start doing this. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the nuclear membrane is going away. The nuclear membrane is going away. And you might want to start thinking about the nuclear membrane going away like this. That effectively is kind of releasing, releasing these chromosomes to, to, to form different structures or, or, or to, as we're going to see now, to move. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is we're going to look at our next stage of mitosis. I want to draw in a, another cell for you, another cell for you, but this time it's going to look a little bit different. So this time we've got our cell. It's the same cell, by the way. It's the same cell. But what we've got now is we're going to have our blue chromosome remember we just got a, a single pair of chromosomes these would be many more in a human cell for example and our pink chromosome basically line up they line up in this way and i think it's worth knowing that this is not sort of magical there are some little structures to the side of the cell which we're not going to look at in any detail and they're kind of pulling and providing the mechanics of this movement okay you may actually see these they're called microtubules these little purple lines and they're connected to the to these purple dots that i've drawn purple anyway they're called centrioles it's not important for our studies but 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 what we've got here is we've got we can see how kind of the mechanics of this is actually happening now this second phase gives way to a third phase and this third phase looks a little bit like, badly drawn, I completely accept, but something a little bit like that. So we see the cell really change its shape at this point. Now what we find, let me just sort of jot back in my little mates here. I'm not going to name them because we're kind of not that interested at this point. Now what we get is we get the splitting and the migration of the two replicated strands of DNA. So there's my blue ones. Let me put my pink ones in. Let me put my pink ones in. So here, look, guys, we get what we call migration. Migration of chromosomes. Okay, migration 
of chromosomes, migration of chromosomes. And you can also notice here that the cell is kind of pinching in a little bit here. Okay, so you might, I'm sure your common sense is going to tell you, it, it, it kind of is preparing for the cell to actually split and to divide. We mentioned cytokinesis. In many ways, this is the preparation for cytokinesis. And finally, guys, on um, mitosis, I just want to show you one other illustration, is that in the, in the kind of the, the final flings of mitosis, we can often have a cell which is almost like bow-shaped uh, like this. And what we find now is that the cellular membrane, sorry, the nuclear membrane actually reforms on both, in both what are now going to become um, identic, genetically identical separate cells in a few moments' time. And of course, what do we have in here? Well, we have one pink chromosome, as I'm illustrating them, and one blue chromosome okay and again we get this pinching in we actually call this a cleavage or a cleavage furrow uh, you may come across the word cleavage in other aspects of life but you can probably see why it's called that here and at this point now we are absolutely at the end of mitosis we are now prepared for cytokinesis so what color are we yellow so let me take my yellow let's just do a little bit of cytokinesis the only i'll make it a much shorter arrow now cytokinesis this member is the separation of the cytoplasm the only thing i really want to draw for you here i'll, I'll do it with circles is that what effectively what we have now is we have two genetically identical cells okay so let me do it like this let me put this in here let me get rid of my circles. This is probably going to look familiar to you. What we have now, if I if I copy that, we now have two genetically identical cells that are at the absolute point of separation. Okay, and I just want to stress here, they are genetically, genetically identical. Okay. Well, we sometimes call them a pair of diploid cells, but we'll get into that in another conversation. They're genetically identical. Now, my question to you then is if we go back straight to, the, to our image. Could you have a look at this image of cells? These are actually human cells. And could you identify the cells that are undertaking mitosis? And if you look at that closely, I hope that you can see that here, for example, this cell has got... The mito one of the mitosis phases because we see the chromosomes literally lining up in the center of the cell just bear in mind that in this cell we've got 23 pairs rather than uh, the one in the example i gave you here another example we have the migration of the chromosomes to each side of the cell here the same okay so we can see that happen here we can see that cytokinesis has recently occurred. In other words, we've got that separation of the cytoplasm and therefore we have two ident genetically identical sister cells.